This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. Talk a little football. We love talking a little football with Alex Winley. You can catch her work there at Bleacher Report and the Heron Outlet. They do an excellent job of covering your Inter Miami CF squad. Follow her on Twitter, like I and many others do, at AAW underscore 1998. Alex, thank you for joining us once again. Appreciate it as always. Thanks for having me on, Miguel. Well, I'm uh, I'm in pain, Alex. I mean, you know, we started out 2-0. and We're feeling good. All of that. Get a couple of injuries. Now it's four losses in a row. Talk to me. Why is it so painful right now? Yeah, I think the loss of Gregory was huge. Um, you know, he was that a, a defensive anchor in the midfield for Miami, so – they don't have a real like for like replacement for him. And so they're they're trying to throw in uh, Bryce Duke or Jean Mata. And that's a disservice to both of those players because they're they're more attacking players compared to Gregory and they may not have the the discipline to do what he does. So um yeah, that's a huge loss. And plus Leo Campana has been out for uh it, since the beginning of the season. So he's he hasn't gotten playing time and 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 Joseph Martinez still isn't, you know, still just trying to get the hang of what, you know, whatever system that Miami is playing right now. And yeah, just everything that went is going wrong has went wrong despite all, all of the, um, uh, um, uh, they just, they got a lot of players over the off season. So you expect them to play a little bit better, but you know, they invested heavily, but you know, right now, none of the players that they brought in bar like Franco Negri and maybe a uh, Sergey Krivstov uh, are, are performing right now. And, and the results show. By the show way, it. Yeah. I'll say this about Negri. He's on, he's due, man. I mean, he keeps hitting the post, Alex. I mean, there, he's had a couple of really nice shots here the last couple of weeks that you're like, damn, man. He's just a couple of inches off from not just a goal, but un golazo. So yeah, he, yeah, he scored the other uh, night, I believe, against uh, yes. the Chicago. He scored. Uh, John Mata had that nice ball into him, and he finished it with the uh, Travella almost, so. Yeah, Franco Negri, he's been great. Stefanelli, uh, Martinez, you know, they still got to come into it. But, yeah, it's been a rough patch for Miami. And, yeah. He's the one that had the, the chest pass to to uh, to the guy in the in the box, right? Uh, say that again? Stefanelli was the guy that had the chest oh. pass to his teammate in the box, right? Uh, yeah. A couple weeks ago, right? All right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's, he's a nifty played. player. Yeah, he just yeah. needs to get into it, but. Yeah, it's do or die time, really. I think Neville's sort of on the hot seat now. You know, it's his last almost, you know, he has a one year left on his contract. You know, he, he's got to do better, especially with the messy rumors. Like, yeah, the ownership wants to win and, you know, four straight losses is not great. Yeah. And, and listen, and here's the thing I, I hear Campana is, is we don't know if he's starting or off the bench. Right. But he's going to come back. Right. Yeah. Uh, this weekend he should be playing. Uh, Neville said uh, either he'll start or come off the bench. I think he'll come off the bench because of this calf injury he's been dealing with and you don't want to rush him back. But um, yes, I think he'll, he'll be coming off the bench this weekend. Let me be brutally honest here. This shit's got to stop already with Campano. I mean, he, he's got to, he, no more, man. You, you got to stay on the pitch, dude. You got to show, you know, we're, we're, we keep leaning and hoping for what we initially saw from him. He's never recaptured that magic ever again. From the way he started, he's never come back to actually sustain, stay on the pitch, score a lot of goals like he was doing before when he initially broke out from, you know, uh, and we we like, wow, who's this Leo Campana kid? Wow, this is fantastic. And you got your contract extension and all, but, you know, the injuries have been just way too much. What is it about it? Have you talked to him? Has he talked about how what's going on? Because, you know, sometimes, Alex, I've been covering sports for 30 years, and I know that sometimes guys go through peaks and valleys, guys or women, that when they're they're athletes, they got to figure out their bodies sometimes. And when they get to the pro level, it puts on so much demand on their bodies that they they either break down and they're not their bodies aren't durable enough, or they're not doing the proper things in training or or diet or whatever it is, and they are able to tweak that and stay on the pitch. What yeah. is on his issue? Yeah, with Campana, before the season, he did speak about changing his diet and, and you know, just taking care of his body more. You know, he's still only 22 and, and figuring out his body and, and growing, and he's still tall and, and growing as a, as a player. So 
Uh, yeah, you're right. He, he said he's been taking care of his body and, and doing yoga and, and, you know, focusing on what he eats and whatnot. And, but yeah, sometimes guys, you know, they have these niggling injuries, like uh, with components, his calf muscle, you know, he's a very physical player. So you don't want to rush him back too quickly. But um, yeah, I, I kind of agree with you in a sense, you know, he got that DP contract. Um, I mean, are leaning on him to lead the line. I know Joseph Martinez is there, but Joseph Martinez isn't a DP. It, this is the Joseph Martinez contract is more so, you know, okay, let's see what you can, can you recapture that form that you had for Atlanta United, then maybe we'll extend you. But with, uh, um, excuse me, with Leo Campana, you know, that's their guy. They thought they locked him in to a long-term contract, regardless of who the coach is, you know, he's going to be here for the foreseeable future up until in Miami Freedom Park and all that stuff. And yeah, they, they, they're trying to lean on him, but you know, I don't want to blame a guy for injury, but you know, maybe, you know, got to be a little bit more mindful or how your body is. Maybe don't do certain things that you used to do because, you know, you're a professional player now and, and the team's leaning on you. You said something interesting in the initial part of this interview where you said whatever system they're playing now. So talk to me about that. Can you, uh, can you uh, delve in a little bit more on that? Are you frustrated? Are you confused? Is it, are you seeing him change up? What, what, what are you seeing that you said whatever system they're playing? Yeah, and I said that because, you know, with Gregory out, they're going to have to change some things. You know, they have John Mata and Bryce Duke now kind of playing the uh, the number six role that uh, Gregory was doing. But, uh, you know, it's just not working. You see with the, the four straight losses, you know, you, you know they, they're trying different things. They're building up certain uh, in, in different ways, you know, against Cincinnati, they build up in this sort of back three kind of hybrid. And right now, I, you know, I think we can all say it's not really working so far. And I know during um, Neville's pre-match conference this morning, um, he was talking about, you know, moving back to two strikers and, and, you know, trying to get some more offense on the field. But, you know, I think as football fans, we, we know that maybe, you know, sometimes it's not necessarily, you know, sometimes you just have to go for it and, and, and maybe suit the tactics to the players instead of, uh, you know, trying to implement something that may not work. And and that's been a recurring thing with Inter Miami. They've, they've tried so hard to play this identity, but sometimes you need to, uh, you know, just kind of go where what with what you have, what the players are, are, are doing. There's a lot of speed, a lot of cool, you know, technical players, a lot of, you know, guys who want to score like Joseph and, and Leo. And sometimes you, you got to play to their strengths. And I know Neville came into the season talking about possession-based soccer, which is great. And, and they played it at times against uh, the uh, Montre CF Montreal and, and the Philadelphia Union. But now I think, you know, it's it's desperate time in the season. I think they, they got to move the ball a little bit quicker, maybe go direct, have some more verticality in there. And, you know, you know, these endless crosses into the the, the, the penalty box, you know, with a, with a five foot nine Joseph into, you know, leading the line. I don't think that's going to work uh, going forward. So um, I said whatever formation is because, you know, they're probably going to switch it up this weekend with two strikers um, with Leo coming off the bench. And right. yeah, they just need to get back to what they were doing, both, you know, during preseason against Austin FC, they look good and then uh, Montreal and and the union, so they have to get back to doing that, and and not what they're doing here. That, that's I should <laughs> clarify. That's what I meant. Yeah. By the way, what's uh, what's up with Robbie? Even though I've kind of given up on him, but what's uh, what's the deal with Robbie? Yeah, still injured. Um, I don't I don't know if his injury is specified, but he's still uh, you know, not ready to to take the pitch quite yet. Which is, yeah, it's unfortunate because he has a, a quite a bit of talent, but his body is just breaking down on him, and hopefully he can get back to the field soon. Because uh, you know, Miami have plenty of games that they will be playing in, and and they're definitely going to need the bodies up there. You know, when you're in your early 20s, I can't deal with your body breaking down. If you're in your 30s and your body's breaking down and you have all that mileage, I can kind of understand. I can deal with that. But, man, when you're that young and spry and you have these kind of issues, I I, I don't know, man. I, 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 I Like I told you initially, I've given up on the kid, to be mm. quite honest. It's just I'm wondering where the hell he's at. And I would imagine that this is his final year here, right? I, I, I can't imagine they're going to hang on to him past this season if he doesn't show anything. Yeah, well, you know, 20, uh, 2024, it's it's a year of first. You know, uh, this year it's Neville's uh, last year of his contract. Who knows if they'll renew him. You know, it's uh, 2024, it's the end of the sanctions. And, you know, uh, heading into 2024, hopefully they'll have shovels in the ground at Mel Reese, Miami Freedom Park. So it's going to be a year of first uh, next season. So, um, yeah, it, it remains to be seen if Robbie does continue. But, 
you know, they're they're keeping him because he's on a super good contract. He's on his uh, Generation Adidas contract, I believe. So it's super cap friendly and Miami need it considering they're still under the sanctions right now. And yeah, I think they're just giving him chances and letting him develop because he is a good player. But, you know, we've seen in the past, Miami are not afraid to move on uh, likable players for the fans, you know, with Lewis Morgan, you know, they moved on uh, LGP, Nico Figal, uh, you know, they, Higuain, obviously he retired, but, you know, uh, it's just they they're, they're, they don't hesitate to move on players, I, I should say, but they do it in a way that, you know, it's not harmful for their career. So I think Robbie, he'll get more opportunities, but um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's crunch time for him. Yeah. And next year you'll see him playing here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Messi. So what's, what's, the, what's the latest? All right. Cause I, I keep thinking, I never believed in this rumor, but now I'm all in because I just don't see him signing a contract anywhere else. And now this story came out that they're, willing to you know give him a, a a piece of the team and i would imagine that maybe the mls will give him an entire team like they did with beckham and those kind of things so so talk to me are we are we going to get the most incredible player signing in the history of south florida this summer yeah well they're they're in for him for sure uh they, this has been a a, a multi-year thing it, it didn't just happen out of the blue uh, yes, I, I know the report came out yesterday that they were offering offering Messi a stake in the club, but you know it was kind of widely known that that was that's what it was going to take to bring him over here. Uh, the Barcelona thing, you know, I, I don't. Yeah, I, I quite frankly, I don't see where they're going to get the money from. Honestly, they they had trouble uh, uh, registering the players that they already had have. I don't know how they're going to maneuver the way to get Messi back. Uh, obviously, Messi does want to return to Barcelona, but. Uh, how they're going to afford him, um, you know, who knows? But uh, Saudi Arabia, obviously, they they can obviously outbid Inter Miami with you know, their eyes closed. Four hundred million in one year? Is that what yeah, that's it's said? <laughs> crazy money. But you know, Messi, you know, and his family probably don't want to move over uh, to Saudi Arabia, and and know, the PR and the yeah. PR that comes with it, dude. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, you know, N MLS expansion is five hundred million. Yeah, and, and the Inter Miami's value will go up as soon as shovels are in the ground at Mel Reese because of the, the stadium evaluations and how uh, the, the club is evaluated. Uh, uh, Give them a team, the money dude. Was, yeah. Give them a team. I just read where San Diego's trying to, you know, figure out a place well, yeah. they, they can get into into the league and, and get an all-MLS stadium because obviously, as you know, that's a requirement nowadays in this league that your stadium has to be an MLS stadium. You can't be sharing. They don't want you doing that anymore. You know, no. for all the in Miami, teams, they, they want you to have your own stadium from here on out. Yeah, Inter Miami would have been in the league far sooner had MLS <laughs> let them ground share with, I don't right. know, the Dolphins or, or someone else, but they had to go through the Fort Lauderdale route. And yeah, it's just, I, I, yeah, I remember 2014 Beckham announced, and, you know, it took them years to get the club off the ground. So, um, yeah, you're right. I, I kind of agree with the, the messy point. Maybe he can go to San Diego. Las Vegas is also an option. Right. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I think him and his family they Tampa, do want. By the way, no, right? No, I can't see that. I, 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 him and his family do want Miami. Especially, you know, his wife likes the city, and they have an apartment here. Uh, but you know, Saudi Arabia, you know, Saudi Arabia can obviously outbid them. But you know, I don't think he. You no, know, I, I can't see him. Oh, I'm saying, I'm saying, wait a minute, I'm, I'm kind of confused. The, Tampa doesn't have an MLS team, right? No, it's USL. That's, that's what I mean. It's still first division, but um, no, no. I mean, you give him the the Tampa expansion or Vegas or San Diego. What I'm saying is, if he wants to stay in Florida, because I know his wife loves South Florida, he could get the Tampa expansion, right? Yeah, but Although, I don't think. I don't know. Does the Rowdies guy have like dibs on that? He, no, I yeah, I don't think Tampa is a serious contender. I think it's more so Vegas and San Diego. Right. Uh, Tampa, yeah, the Rowdies are. Yeah, the yeah, Rowdies and MLS. Wait, but wait a minute, Alex. Yeah. If he's coming to play for a couple of years, you really can't give him San Diego or Vegas because those are going to be expanding very soon. It has to be something that after he retires, he can then take over. So maybe we're looking at teams 33 and 34, not 31 and 32. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I get it. But uh, yeah, I don't know. But yeah, uh, it would be because curious. Remember to how Beckham we'll did it? But they yeah. gave him the team. But then he, 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 you know, he didn't have the city yet at that time. Yeah. You know, he just had the, he had ownership rights to an, an expansion team. He finished his career in the MLS and then 
you know, he became an owner. I would think that with Messi, he's going to come for two or three years and then after take over ownership. So maybe it's really not the first two that are coming up here, 31 and 32, right? Because that's that's where we're at, right? It's the next ones are 31 and 32. Am I am I correct on that? I'm, I might yeah, I'd have to double check. Let me double check. Because I think right we now. have one coming that's 30, right? Because we have 29 in the league right now, right? Is that what it is? Uh, yeah, it's a bit of an unbalanced uh, thing. Right, and there's a 30 already uh, awarded, right? That's coming. Uh, I'm yeah, missing. this is uh, 29 teams with St. Louis. The 30th team would be San Diego or Las Vegas. I don't right, think they okay. have a 31, 32, okay. yet. So, yeah, so then those are the ones that you probably would award him, that 32, that 33, that 34, because those are the ones that are going to expand in three or four or five years from now. And then that'll be perfect for Messi that once he finishes his run. And you know what? Now you and I are coming up with something here because <laughs> if they give him a piece of Inter and then they give him his own expansion team, he can then retire from Inter, sell his portion, and it'll be more expensive after he's done playing. Obviously, the value will be skyrocketing at that point. So he sells a piece of that and then he goes into his expansion team and he runs that and he's making... My God, a boatload of money. Also, the Apple TV deal, they're going to have uh, an interest in getting Messi to uh, the right. league because it'll drop up subscribers. And I'm sure uh, Apple will want to push the league to, to potentially get Messi in here because, you know, only but it will only help their brand and MLS and, and the both of them together. So, um, yeah, there's a vested interest in all of the teams, I should say, in MLS because it's just going to bring eyes to the league, more money, raise the cap value, raise the the value for the entire league and um yeah it'll only be you know good for the entire uh, mls oh yeah god hell yeah uh by the way you can follow alex on twitter at aaw underscore 1998 she does an excellent job of covering the team practices games constantly giving you insight on all that stuff and catch your work at the bleacher report and by the way subscribe to the heron outlet they do a really they do a really nice job uh talking inter all the time alex we'll wrap it up with this give us a preview of the dallas game do our boys have a shot here um yes they have a shot because they're at home mainly i, I would say the dallas are a very good side they have Great young talent, Jesus Ferreira, Alan Velasco, Paul Ariola, U.S. Men's National Team player. You know, they've got, uh, <laughs> you know, their front line is very stacked. And obviously they'll be coming uh, to drive pink to win. And, and you know, they their, their last game they drew a 1-1 against the Portland Timbers. And obviously they're going to want to get a, a win to try to get, you know, that draw from behind them. Um, Miami are at home and, and they play well there. But they did lose against Chicago 3-2. So it's they're not unbeatable at, at, at home. So that's going to be the key. You know, it all depends on Leo Campana. If he can come off the bench, provide that spark. Um, I may have a chance, but yeah, uh, Orlando, like, yeah, they're, they're, they're missing Gregory. They're missing some spots personnel wise on, on the, the field and uh, on the team. And yeah, now it's just up to the coaching staff to, to coach them and get it together. But yeah, if they lose this one, it's it, uh, yeah. I fear for what, you know, it's just going to get progressively uglier with the fans and, yeah, it's just going to get messy. No pun intended, but yeah, let's just hope that they play well. And, you know, they have the players to do so. It's just the mentality and, and really just, you know, going for it more so than a tactical. I Damn, I was pumped for this year, man. I was hoping that we were yeah. going to turn the corner this year a little bit. The first two games, yeah. Everyone yeah. Thought, but yeah. It, yeah. It, Damn. Games, but, By the way, have you ever been to a Portland game? Uh, no, I, I would love to. Yeah, though. That's bucket list, right? Isn't that bucket list? I want to go to a Portland game at night in the rain. Mm -hmm. right like yeah in the rain yeah. See, that that's that, every time i see that specific game that it's a night game and it's raining and they're just chanting the entire time and the dudes are like you know cutting down the wood the, and all yeah, that i mean it's just like a great atmosphere man it's super great i wish miami had something like like yeah, like cutting the tree off. Like that's we, cool. We need, that's winning. Cool we need we need we need to get to the point where we're a really good team yeah where we can the problem is, Alex, you know, they only have us, the hardcore people watching, mm. supporting and talking about it. Hell, even local radio doesn't really do much to even help out or anything. So and, and I, I listen, I'm old. So I saw the fusion when we brought them here. OK, and I was mm -hmm. a kid for the, the strikers, too, when we had a buzz for them and, and, and Lockhart would get packed. Mm -hmm. But I remember when when Hudson took over, we were dead in the water. We were getting four thousand a game. 
His first year, we go to seven. His next year, we go to 11,000. And we got to the Western Conference Finals because at that time, we were still they were still moving us around a little bit for the first couple of years before we were going to settle in the Eastern Conference. Yeah. So we get to the Western Conference Finals, and I guarantee you, Alex, we were headed for 14K plus the following season because – we were getting the average person now to get on board, to take a look at the fusion. And they were playing a beautiful brand of football. It was open. It was exciting and all that stuff. So that's the mix that we need. We need to win. We need to be entertaining in the process, right? And then the other thing, you, you know, Hudson is such a uh, um, a, a god-like figure to sell soccer. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's the other thing that I think you need. And and you know Neville's a very likable guy, mm -hmm. but you're gonna you're gonna need some players and, or a coach or somebody that is really gonna go out there and sell it and talk to people and bring the color and and the enthusiasm to it. And that's what Hudson did. That the average person that really wasn't a soccer fan became intrigued about the fusion just because of Ray Hudson. And then once we got him in the door, they saw how exciting it was, how fun it was, and then we got him hooked. Yeah. So Inter has not done that yet. We have not captured everybody's imagination. You know, hockey has to do that in this town. Baseball yeah. has to do that in this town. And this is why the Marlins don't get a crowd. And this is why the hockey team has failed to kind of build up because they have not built themselves up to be a good team to prove to people that you're you're dedicated and to entertain. You don't have to win a title, but you do have to be entertaining in this town. Once you get to that point, then we're going to see the crowds and we're going to see the buzz. Yeah, but until I then, think. we're 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 kind of, you know, they got us, the hardcores. That's it. It's the only people they have. You Very know. True. You know, it sucks. So, we're the crazy people that'll go see a US Open game. Nope. Yeah. Do that kind of stuff. Yeah, the US Open draw is actually uh later today at six o'clock. So we'll we'll see who Inter Miami gets to play in, in the next round. So I, I live I live 15 minutes from FIU. I yeah. I go over to see them. I'll just walk in, sit down, buy a cheap ticket, and I'll go watch Miami FC in a in a in a US Open Cup game. But that's because you know I love the sport and I wanted to succeed and I've supported all the local teams that have been here always, but yeah, to win the average fan over, we, we may need a Messi. We need we may need that that conduit that that really pushes those people over. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it, uh, it is what it is. All right, tell us uh, what are you doing uh, covering uh, Inter on the Heron Outlet and Bleacher Report? What do you got going on? Yeah, so uh, Bleacher Report, Heron Outlet now, 90-minute uh, soccer. I don't know if you guys heard of it, Minute Media, 90-minute uh, football where I cover all of MLS now. So I'm I'm, do I'm still doing the inner Miami thing with the Heron Outlet, but now I'm, I'm writing more about other MLS teams with 90-minute U.S. and uh, lots of cool stuff, uh, Players, a uh, player of the week, goals of the week, you know, lots of fun nice. stuff going on over there. Um, but, yeah, same, same thing. You can find me on Twitter. Uh, you know, anything else, you, yeah, just find me on Twitter, shoot me a DM, and usually I'm, I'm pretty friendly, uh, depending on the day. No, I'm just kidding. But, um, yeah, um, st same thing, AAW underscore 1998, and, yeah, that's pretty much it. Alex, thank you as always. Great information, great insight. Really appreciate it. Thank you. You got it. There you go. Alex Winley, man, good stuff. Follow her on Twitter, AAW underscore 1998. Let's hope... Show.